Hi and welcome to this week's uh, Grid Girl podcast with me Helena. Um, just a quick special that I'm doing this week, just around the uh, Concord Agreement. Obviously we've seen that all the teams have now signed this. So I just wanted to fill you in a bit about what the Concord Agreement is and why it's significant to F1. So enjoy. So in simple terms, the Concord Agreement is the agreement between the uh, F1 teams, the FIA, and the group that owns F1. So that currently is uh, Liberty Media Group, who is headed by uh, head of F1, Chase Carey. So how that works is basically around every five years, the contract for the Concord Agreement expires and we look to renew it with sometimes with different terms and how it works is just basically um it manages the commercial side of f1 so basically the money the revenue and um what financial kind of backing the teams get from f1 as a group now over the years it's changed quite a bit and i'm going to discuss some of the differences between the um previous Concord agreement that was uh, previously done by a different um, owner of F1 that was headed by Bernie Eccleston, um, who we all know and love, um, all know and hate in some cases, um, and then we'll look at how it differs to this Concord agreement. So Liberty Group's kind of ethos in this Concord Agreement was to look at making F1 fairer and levelling the playing field. So this is um, levelling the gap between obviously your top team Mercedes who are absolutely dominating the sport and have done over the past kind of seven, eight years. Um, and bringing that gap down from our team at the back which is currently Williams. Now. The reason they're wanting to kind of level this playing field off is to make the sport more exciting. And let's be honest, we all want to see a more exciting race every weekend. We want to see that gap closed. You know, it's although it is exciting watching that midfield, the race ultimately becomes boring because you literally know who's going to win it before the race has even begun. And I think that's part of what Liberty is trying to do to draw more fans into the sport. The other thing that Liberty is kind of really focusing on is making F1 a sustainable sport. Now, obviously we know that F1 spends millions each year. Um, If you look at some of the bottom and the top teams, some of the top teams are spending in excess of kind of 250, 300 million. And then you've got your lower end teams that are still spending kind of, you know, 90 mil. And that's a lot of money for essentially cars driving around a track. Now, obviously, he's more than that. And a lot of that budget goes into very different things because F1 is such a technical sport. And to build some of the parts, like to build some of the parts on an F1 car alone, costs millions. And This is what F1 is trying to do to make it more sustainable in terms of companies. So we don't see the likes of what we saw a few years ago with Force India kind of potentially not having anyone to buy it and looking at potentially not having them in the sport. Um, When we've seen financial troubles with Williams as well recently, and you know, with other teams like Haas, who ultimately are not a constructor team, but are in there as a constructor and you know, F1 needs to make sure that there are still 10 teams to compete because if there's not, it's not as fun to watch. And, you know, Liberty Media's ultimate goal is to make it a more enjoyable sport for fans and to, you know, reach out to new fans of a new generation. So that was kind of their aim within the agreement. Now, do I think they've done this well? To a certain extent, yes. Um, do I think this will work well? Who knows? We yet to see. But I'll run you through first of all how the Concord Agreement works. So, how does the Concord Agreement work? You're asking. Well, basically, it's how F1 company divvies up its commercial money. Now. 
previously um, and in the last Concord Agreement, it worked into different what we call columns. So how this works is there are different columns for different bits of the money that go to different teams. So in column one, we see an equal split of some money, a percentage of the money that goes to all teams. So they all start with the same money. Now the different columns basically add more money to certain teams and less money to others. So in column two, um, we see money awarded basically on how you did in the previous year's Constructors Championship. Now, this works in a way that obviously you'll see the likes of Mercedes get the most money, down to Williams who get the least. Um, I'll talk a bit more about this later in terms of the new Concord Agreement, but basically the gaps between each team were quite big and it meant that there was quite a big difference to the amount of money that Mercedes receive and the amount of money Williams currently receive but I'll touch on that a bit later. Then you have column three, which is basically a bonus for some of the top performing teams. So this kind of bonus payment um, went to uh, Mercedes, Ferrari, Red Bull, McLaren, um, who basically got the payment as a recognition of their achievement. Not really sure what that is, but you know, hey ho. Um, but that was basically why they got that payment. Uh, so this was an extra payment to add on top of the bonus they basically got for finishing higher in the Constructors Championship. In column four then, we saw an additional payment. Now this was agreed in the last negotiation of the previous Concord Agreement extension. Now, how this worked was, it meant that Red Bull, McLaren and Williams also got an additional payment. Now, this was basically negotiated to kind of help support them because they felt that it was unfair. Um, so yeah, they got an extra bonus payment. Then there was an extra bonus payment in column five, which went to Ferrari. Now, this was basically called a bonus bid payment. So they got that bonus bid payment and they also get a um, payment for being the longest kind of serving F1 team. They are the only teams who have competed in every single Formula One race, and that is part of the reason they receive this extra bonus payment. But this bonus bonus payment basically wipes the floor with any payment that any team gets from F1. Meaning that, in theory, Ferrari should have the best team because they have the most money. However, on track this season, we're not seeing that. So there you go. Turns out, money can't buy you a championship. Now, how this is weird this time around is that there was a lot of disagreement over how this should work with the new Concord Agreement. Now, within the new Concord Agreement is the budget caps that we are seeing coming into the um, 2022 season now. Um, originally, obviously, it was supposed to be 2021. I think the budget caps may still be coming in in 21. Um, but a lot of the rule changes from the FIA are not coming until 22. So this budget cap means that no F1 team um, can spend more than 145 million. However, there are exceptions. So this takes out your drivers are not included in this 45 million and your top five earning executives. So for example, Toto Wolf's salary would not fall into this category. Um, you potentially would not see uh, James Allison's salary in this as well. And it's to kind of take out that burden, but also show that, you know, drivers will get paid a lot no matter where they go. So it's not to put a cap on what the drivers earn because of their racing, basically. I think that's how it's working. Um, that budget cap, you know, some of the smaller teams, some of the teams more towards back and field wanted it to be much lower. They wanted it at um, kind of between 100 and 120 million. Um, some of the teams wanted it much higher. They wanted it at kind of between 175 and 195, but ultimately they've agreed on this figure for now. Um, and that will proceed for the next five years in the Concord Agreement. Now, Ferrari in the previous Concord Agreement have a veto power. 
Now, this veto power basically means that any rule change um, that is proposed by um, any of the teams, the FIA, F1, um, has to be agreed upon um, unanimously by all teams. However, Ferrari have a veto power. So we saw this used recently in the um, suggestion by the FIA of looking at using reverse grids. Now, what that means is that um, if you qualified first, you start last. And Ferrari basically said, nah, we don't want that. We, you know, if we qualify first, we want to start first. So we are not seeing any reverse grids um, at present as Ferrari have vetoed that. Now, within the new Concord agreement, Ferrari still have this veto. However, um, they have changed the rules on having a un unanim unanimity, they can't even get the word out, um, in terms of their agreement. So how this works is it's just basically a majority. If the majority of teams say, yeah, that's fine, they're going to change the rule, unless Ferrari veto it. There you go. Now, to Ferrari to keep their veto power meant that in this Concord agreement, they had to lose a lot of the money that they receive. Now, as I mentioned before in the different kind of columns of prize money, um, it has changed slightly. So columns one and two basically stay. Now, column one was your equal share. There's an equal pot that's given to everyone. And column two was how you finished in the previous year's constructors. Now that's changing slightly that the gap between the top team and the bottom team will be much lower. So um, the top team will get 14% of that prize money. The bottom team will get 6%. So it's still quite a significant drop. But in terms of actually the money between each placed finisher, it's not that much different. Now, in terms of the bonus that Mercedes, Ferrari and um, Red Bull and McLaren used to get is going to change. So basically they're scrapping that and no one will get that bonus. Um, essentially it was like a bonus for if you were liked by Bernie-ish. Um, which also means the additional bonus for um, you know Red Bull, McLaren and Williams will also be going. However, the historic bonus that Ferrari get will remain in place, but they won't get the bonus bid that they also got. So the money that they are being given for being the longest serving F1 team will reduce massively. Now they had to reduce that so that they could keep their veto. So just bear that in mind. Now, column three is basically being replaced with a new pot of money which is a bonus for the top three finishing teams um yeah so basically although red bull ferrari and mercedes aren't getting that bonus pot they will probably get that bonus pot for finishing in the constructors except for this year ferrari wouldn't because uh you know mclaren are basically wiping the floor with them at the minute um yeah, so that part got replaced. Now, what does this mean for the sport? Now, Toto Wolff has been very vocal recently about not being happy about this Concord agreement because he thinks that it will impact Mercedes the most. Now, he feels that Mercedes have brought a lot to the sport, um, especially within recent time, and that recognition isn't there anymore. So the bonus payment that um, teams like Red Bull, McLaren and Williams um, got was for their like recognition within the sport now these payments have been taken away which will affect mercedes massively they currently have the largest team on the grid um so the budget cap and then this reduction in spending will make a massive difference to how that team looks next year um in terms of some of the smaller teams so the williams for example are quite happy with the outcome of this because in terms of changes they want if they can form alliances well with other teams, they potentially can get some rule changes that might work in their favour. Also, the cost cap between the top teams and the bottom teams mean that as a constructor team and as a kind of independent team in F1, they will be able to leverage a bit more, which means that that gap that they've currently got from, you know, probably around 30 seconds from the top to the bottom of the grid will ultimately reduce for them. 
which will work in their favour and hopefully see them in a position where they're back on top. They also can't afford to spend that amount of money as a team. You know, they make a lot of stuff themselves. They can't have this massive team like um, Mercedes do. So it will make a big difference in terms of how the teams look. And we saw this recently with McLaren announcing that it was um, looking to make redundant quite a large number of its staff. Um, and this was kind of in preparation for this Concord agreement coming out and the budget cuts because it knew that it can't sustain all these jobs um, and you know advisory roles and all the extra stuff if they were going to have a budget cap of 145 million so i think you know doing this means that the businesses should s sustain more and that is what liberty are looking to do because in terms of a business model if you're already spending 10 million on your car probably more than that let's be honest probably 100 million on your car maybe who knows um but if you're spending that amount of money you then can't afford to viably spend so much on the members of staff now renault also announced cuts to their team now they're looking to move a lot of their experienced people from the f1 team into the road car um teams so that those jobs although they're being lost from f1 are not being lost completely from renault as a company and you know it's quite interesting to see how teams are going to do this differently but this is definitely going to impact mercedes the most and you know that is why toto has been very vocal about it in terms of some of the other teams so red bull it will impact because it is a top three team however what it loses it makes back through having a sister team in alpha Tauri. now to have both teams there means that whatever they lose in that respect they gain in another is not going to make much difference to them because you know actually they've lost a couple of mil here but then they've got a couple of mil back there so red bull seems to be quite happy with the agreement i think ferrari on the whole are not too happy about the agreement and matteo bernotto definitely um his face said it all when he was interviewed this week about the concord agreement and he was not a happy guy. Um, however, he was happy that Ferrari still got to keep its veto. And this could remain a big part for them because they can ultimately decide how F1 changes. Because if you don't want reverse grids, I'll veto it. And, you know, that's something that will affect those middle and back field teams because they could have an alliance of seven of them and Ferrari just have to say no. Um, in terms of keeping those middle field teams, so quite a lot of the agreement has benefited teams like Haas, um, you know, who aren't a constructor team, but are um, a team that basically buys other teams' parts. So they don't make a lot of the car themselves. Um, you know, they have a Ferrari engine, they buy parts from McLaren, I think, Renault, you know mercedes they, they buy a bit from all the teams to get the best bits of each car to put it into their car to make it the best ultimately this isn't working this season for them and i think part of that is down to the um ferrari engine it's just not suiting any of the teams at all but you know their concept did work their first season in f1 they were like fourth i think in the championship so it shows that something like that can have a massive impact and you know liberty want to retain teams like that because they don't want it to be focused around only having constructor teams or only having independent teams or only having you know works teams they want it to be fairer for all the types of teams that there are in f1 so yeah that's basically the concord agreement um a lot of waffle probably for me but that is probably the easiest way to explain it um, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. Um, I do usually try and do these videos after each race, so you will see uh, next week's um, update um, from Italy. And, you know, until then, uh, 